Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. this review for Warhammer the Horus Heresy the Age of Darkness rulebook. I want to specifically focus on this book here. Uh, it comes as part of the Age of Darkness, the big box set, loads of models. Already done a review for that, a chance to zoom in, take a look at the models, just to see all the contents of the box uh, in that video. So that should be live, you can check that one out. Uh, and I did mention that video, I would do a separate video uh, for those that want to take a look inside the book. So the intent with this video is to go through the whole book. Uh, it's not going to get stuck into the rules. Uh, it's, I don't play Horus Heresy, you know, it's like a previous 40k edition. Uh, but it's a chance just to glean through the whole book uh, and to get an idea uh, of the contents inside. It is big. It's huge, massive uh, book here. And it is... 335 pages. That is massive. Good sized book. And this is just the rule book. You've got two other books for Traitor uh, and Loyalist Legions. Uh, both those books are uh, the same size, if not slightly bigger than this. So Games Workshop really have, yeah, this is a huge undertaking from them. Uh, these books are massive. The amount of work, the graphics work and so on, uh, and just all of the fluff. Uh, and the whole uh, construction of the thing, tons of work has been put into this. So it's not just been a, a sideshow of a release here for Horus Heresy. I think Games Workshop mean business with this. Uh, it's the size of the books just shows you uh, how serious this is. So will I ever get into Horus Heresy? I've already said it. If someone offers to play, I'll play it. No problem at all. Um, yeah, so who knows? We'll leave it at that. Uh, I do have a soft spot for some of the models. Uh, strengths then, for the Horus Heresy, maybe you're thinking about getting into it. Maybe just take a look at the artwork here. The brand new re-sculpts and games workshops, you've got the strength now, plastic stuff coming out. Uh, the strength of uh, proper books have uh, been released, uh, the Traitor and Loyalist books as well. Uh, you've got the excitement of future releases, new characters, Dreadnoughts, Tanks, Infantry and so on. Uh, so there's that strength. The other strength, obviously, is the ability to expand out your collection into the Forge World range, which is you know, vast and uh, some incredible, crazy models that you can get uh, for that. So plenty of good uh, reasons to get into Warhammer 30,000, uh, for sure. So I'd say now is probably the best time ever, just for this release and the buzz and excitement. And if you do get into it, you'll probably find others that are uh, getting into it as well. So, as uh, Games Workshop sent me a copy of uh, the set through the post, it's very kind of them to do so. Uh, for discount 40k, including discount 30k, and other gaming accessories uh, and paints and, and so on, then do check out the channel sponsor, link for them in the video description below. It's the outpost.co.uk. Uh, uh, they do 40k usually at 20% off, sometimes more, uh, and you're able to get a hold of uh, discount stuff from them. It just helps keep the cost of the hobby down. Uh, if you're watching, you're based in the UK, uh, they shipped all over the place, uh, Northern Ireland, the Highlands of Scotland and so on, uh, available uh, shipping from them. And there also is, if your order's large enough, you get free shipping as well, which again helps to keep the costs down. Uh, they also ship across Europe, uh, to a good number of countries, Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland. So if you're in those countries, uh, they will ship to you. Uh, with duties already paid, so uh, that will speed up the process of getting it to you. And I believe for the vast majority of these European countries, there's also an opportunity for free postage as well, which is uh, quite significant. So you can check them out uh, in the video description below. So I guess it's the best piece of artwork to start off with. Uh, it's Horus standing over Sanguinius and the Emperor there as well. Famous, one of the more famous and iconic pieces of artwork. So I will go at quite a pace here because 
we're on page seven and we've got <laughs> 334 pages to go. Talking about getting into the hobby. Not seen this artwork before. The Age of the Emperor, there's the Adeptus Custodes. You can use those models in uh, Warhammer 30,000, I believe. That is a Forge World Knight Lancer. I actually have one of those models. It needs to be painted up. Hmm. Looks particularly nice. The Unification Wars. To start with the fluff. Fascinating read. A lot of people are into the uh, the fluff, the um, the novels on the whole history of 30k and so on. People say it's very interesting. I'd also say with this book, uh, with the cellophane comes two reference sheets for the game, which open out like so. It's got your damage charts, the vehicles, hit rolls, wound rolls, just a rules summary on each, and also advertisement for. Uh, the books here, and that's one of the other strengths I was going to mention about one forty thirty thousand. Uh, the very strong characters that you have uh, for each of the factions as well: Lorgar, Magnus the Red, Lehman Russ, Rabute, Killerman. They're all there. Um, some amazing characters, amazing sculpts that are available uh, from Forge World, and maybe plastics in the future. I don't know what Games Workshop will decide to do. So, yeah, these books are uh, well known, and very, very, very popular indeed. So strong, strong narrative and a depth here for 30k number strength uh, for getting into it here. Great Crusade, Imperial Might. Always like this tank here. Very nice indeed. Lords of the Imperium. The Imperium of Mankind, so some background information on that. The Imperial Truth, the Warp, the Psychic Paradox. I've not seen a lot of this artwork. This is all new stuff here, well new to me at least. The Armada Imperialis, the Mechanicum. The Exertus Imperialis. All broken down into sections. Yeah, they must have com commissioned new art here. Got all these Primarchs all together. Crazy artwork. There's the Legions marching off in the distance. Legionnaires or legions of starters. And it's a yeah, it's a fascinating tale of betrayal, treachery, treason, division, all of it's all exciting stuff. And to, to watch to, to read the narrative of that as it all unfolds, starting United Together and the cracks start to form and the betrayals and all the events and the fallout from it and so on. It is a it's a fascinating storyline for sure. I guess the question for you in the comments section, what fluff do you like more? 30k background story or why am I 40,000? I imagine a lot of people would vote in favour of 30k, but who knows. The Armour of the Legion of Starters. So some fantastic reference points here for your painting. It's the bolt gun. Different types. Phobos pattern. The Tigris pattern. The Umbra pattern. Mark II Crusade Armour. Mark III, oh wow, this is all very interesting. A little bit primarity here with the Mark IV, the face. The Mark III, Iron Armour. For the Imperial Fists. It's the Mark V Armour, the Heresy Armour. Fascinating, and then Mark VI Corvus armor with the famous uh, beak face, which I very much like. Interesting color scheme on these guys. Oh, it's the old white scars. Interesting. Yeah. Dark angels. Yes, in black. That's right. Originally, in their original color scheme, not the dark green. Talks about their prime art. It's all fantastic stuff here. The Emperor's Children, in their famous purple, as you get a ribbon with it for marking the page. Not so keen on purple, it can look good. There's the Iron Warriors, similar colour scheme to what they are now, 40k for Chaos Space Marines. Yeah, you could do some great effects with these, with the metals. Very strong colour scheme with them. There's the White Scars. Yeah, look particularly nice. I do like it when colours are toned down. You see the red and the gold here, it's all been tarnished and toned down. It looks particularly good. 
Nice. Can you imagine these in plastic? Hmm. There's the space balls. Yeah, I mean, so for example, you may not like a particular chapter in 40k, but in 30k, the colour scheme you may actually really like, so you, you may well get a bit of crossover in that regard. There's the Imperial Fists. Now, them in plastic with the shields. Very, very cool if that happens. Always love the idea of those shields. With the Night Lords. Just taking a bit of time to go through these. Again, just with the colours toned down. Nice. Conrad Curves. There's the Blood Angels. A classic scheme. The Iron Hands. Yeah. I, to be honest, a lot of these colour schemes I'd imagine would be pretty quick. A lot of it's effect. Uh, they're quite simple in colours, so you could probably paint your armies up pretty quick. The World Eaters. They already look very chaos even at the start. And Grom. My Primark. Oh, the Ultramarines. Just as soon as I see them, I hear chanting in the back of my mind. <laughs> From James, there they are. Oh dear, there's, there's more eagles and gold on them than anyone else. They're just <laughs> so die hard Imperial. Uh, there's the Death Guard. Wow, that's looking like that at that stage. Obviously, more Terran for their Primarch. There's the Thousand Sons in red, of course. They shift, they were in red originally. Yeah, I've seen a uh, chap. Painted them up at the club, the War Games Club, SSWG. Had these painted up in red. Looks very nice. The Sons of Horus. Yeah. Lovely colour scheme. Perhaps one of my favourites, the Vertica, I have to say. It's nice. Especially if you get this, this green to a nice metallic kind of finish, not just a flat colour, but you get a real nice metallic glint to it. Goes well with the gold and the black, and a bit of red in there as well. Now, I do. Yeah, I'd rate that as one of my favourites. If I was to paint them up, I think it'd probably go for that colour scheme. Uh, word bearers. You know the detail, the little words, inscriptions written all across the armour. Nice enough colour scheme, lovely banner. The salamanders, of course, in their green, but it's like a, a brownie kind of green. Here it is. The raven guard. You're not short on options here. Quite straight, nice and straightforward with the black armour. Again, you can go for a nice effect with that. Alpha Legion. Lovely colour scheme on them. Yeah, another. Very nice. The heraldry on these looks fantastic. Nice banner. Beautiful colour scheme on them. Again, if you can get nice metallics on those. Particularly good. Very nice indeed. Talons of the Emperor, so the Sisters of Silence can take part. The Legio Custodes, just the regular sculpts from 1 to 40,000 you can use. The Ordo Sinister, the Imperial Assassins, they're all available. So the Auxilio, we've had those feature on the channel, the Challenger Scorpion game. Like uh, Armoured Imperial Guard, lovely banner here. Markings on those, very nice. Again, imagine them in plastic. <sighs> Whoa, that'll be something. And you got the Mechanicum. The Titans. And they're now into the Age of Darkness, so we are about a third-ish through the book here. So just the battles against chaos. And a whole timeline here, some more background information. It is all very interesting reading. Fascinating. And the thing is, you read 30k history, it's going to help you know your 40k history, because it's obviously the, the connection. Auxilia. Yeah, fantastic. Look at this fantastic setup. Map of the galaxy. Not really cramming stuff. There's, there's a leisurely pace here with the book. The artwork's incredible. So you're onto the core rules now. So you're looking at page uh, 146 for the start of the core rules. So 150 odd pages of background fluff and information, colour schemes, uh, the types of legions, and so on. So, just defining the terms, same here, very useful colour scheme reference here for the uh, Contempt of Dreadnought, the Imperial Fists. 
Uh, again, some more general principles for the rolls. Talking about templates. More. Uh, basic information before getting started. So it talks about turns. So turns are, as if I remember this, so I was going to say there's no command phase. Yeah, but there are things, there is a start of the act, active player's turns. So there may well be things to resolve at the start of the turn before movement anyway, so it's kind of a command phase. Uh, then you've got your movement phase, your shooting phase, assault phase, and then the end of the turn, which I'm not sure when morale is actually done. Could, should be at the end, I'd imagine. Okay. So you have a whole thing about reactions here. Colour scheme for the uh, Spartan Assault Tanks. Yeah, those are pretty much my two, two of my top colour schemes. Sons of Horus, nice. And Imperial Fists, I've got plenty of Imperial Fists, Imperial Fists already, it's probably Sons of Horus, but you've got your movement phase, so unit coherency, distances for movement, and so on. As your coherence, your rules, pretty familiar, really. Shooting phase. Snapshots, remember all of this. Wrong to hit. So some mechanics, a good chunk of the mechanics are familiar if you're into Ninth Edition, but there are some things that are done differently. So yeah, things like invulnerable saves and so on, talk about cover. So the rules are quite filled out. It's, they're covering a good number of pages. You've got destroyer weapons here, D weapons. Rapid fire, bombing runs, pistols. Down to your assault phase, so rolling your charges and so on. Yeah, who can fight, who's out of the fight. Yeah, things like this, this works a bit differently. So instead of like three plus in close combat, you take what your ballistic skill is, or weapon skill, uh, against the defender's weapon skill. So if you're very highly skilled and your opponent's not very skilled, then you're gonna hit easier. If you're both evenly matched, you're gonna strike evenly. So I think that's quite fair. But uh, both work okay, it's not a big deal, but that's the way it works here for 30k. And then uh, strength against toughness is actually a chart as opposed to uh, a two or three or four or five or six. It's, you actually compare the strength of weapon against the toughness and that'll give you the result that you need to achieve. You've got morale, which I believe works a bit differently as well. Talk about falling back. The unit types, what they can and can't do, cavalry, infantry, and so on. Subtypes, characters, what they can do. Quite crucial, I'd imagine, in the game. Psychic powers, vehicles. So instead of wounds, like a uh, tank's got 11 wounds, um, you have hit points. This works in a similar kind of way. So there's a chance to either destroy the vehicle straight away. Uh, I believe they've kept that. We'll just have a little look. Do, do, do. So vehicle damage. Yeah, so if you're if you're hit, if your last can hits well enough and you roll well enough, you just blow the vehicle up entirely. The vehicle's destroyed on a seven plus. Uh, the other options are mobilized, weapon destroy, crew stun, crew shaken, which affects them in different ways. Um, so that's the way the old system worked. As uh, also you got hull points, so you could take multiple hits, not quite be destroyed, but you just work your way through the hull points and the vehicle's destroyed. Uh, that way it so just succumbs to overwhelming damage and firepower. I used to think that system worked fine. Uh, but with that you have to you have the strength of the weapon with any abilities on top and you're trying to beat uh, the armor value. So you've got strength fate weapon coming through, armor value of 14, so it's gonna be quite tough to cause trouble for that target. So uh, on the uh, Legion Land Raider here's uh, front 14, side 14, rear 14. It's a very, very tough vehicle indeed to actually try and get that penetrating shot to go through. So, yeah, it's all fine. The downside is for side, rear, and so on, armor values is trying to work out which angle you're hitting at. So you get this little template here, uh, which shows you which direction you're firing at and then which type of armor. So I remember classic games used to drop battle suits down behind James's Predator tanks, hit the armor value of 10 or 11 at the back, instead of front armor 13 at the front. So 
which is realistic because that's the way armoured vehicles operate today. Usually the front arm is better, side and rear is, is weaker. So that was actually a realistic reflection. That's been done away with uh, for ninth edition. They may go back to that. The downside was arguments. People used to argue about, oh, I'm shooting this angle. People say, oh, no, no, you're more that angle. So there was, it wasn't too bad, but you used to get that sometimes. You had to sort of put, put a tape measure or a straight line across from corner to corner for the vehicle and really check your angles if it was important. So that's one of the downsides. Uh, yeah, shooting as well. So instead of everything fires in all different directions, for night edition, nice and simple, you actually had to get your angles right. Uh, so side sponsors could only fire out the side. They couldn't just shoot in any direction they wanted to. So that was another aspect to vehicles. Which is okay, never really a problem. Never had any big issues with it. The other great thing about this being released by Games Workshop, I don't think it will cause Forge World any trouble. In fact, I think it will do them well. If people get into first can, then they'll start looking at Forge World for the more specialist models. So we're over halfway through now. Battlefield terrain it's talking about, still on the rules. There's a lot here, there is a lot. Uh, they actually tell you the points, values, and the types, and the extra rules, and so on. Bunkers, defense lines, not too much. Special rules, there's Knight Lancer again, fantastic model. Very nice. And I think unlikely they'll be in plastic, that kind of scale model and specialization, so I think Forge World will be okay. I'm ready to fear. And run just extra special rules, Master Crafted, Legion Starters. A lot of rules here, still going, split fire, pathfinder, torrent, twin link, and so on. And now uh, a showcase for models. It's a lovely card scheme, Sons of Horus. And you see the interaction here. Um, you've got your four drive models being used. You can treat yourself, get yourself a nice four drive model. With the plastics as well, use the plastic models from Games Workshop to bulk your collection out, and every now and then treat yourself to Forge World, you know, some kind. Gaming in the Age of Darkness. There's an army, very nicely put together, Sons of Horus. It's a termite drill, I think it's called that one. Fighting another legion here. There's the Iron Hands. Nice. Again, you've got they are fighting with the shields. So yeah, a lot of a lot of four draw models here being used for this collection. There's a word bearers collection. Looking really nice. And then this green coming out from some of the models here. There's a salamanders. That's nice to giving you an example of uh, a number of collections. Bit of red going on with the green here. Very Christmassy. Not so keen. The Salamander's ever, I guess, perhaps the official colour scheme. Here's the uh, Night Lords. I'm just looking to see if they're using 40k models in some ways. No, it's okay. Again, see, there's a, a fair bit of Forge World representation here Raven Guard, Death Guard. Uh, Solar Auxilia, the massive Titan. You can certainly do some decent apocalypse size 30k battles. And Warhammer World, they've got some amazing setups for 30k as well. Age of Darkness modes of play. It's got narrative play, campaign play, open play, and match to play. It's similar to a 40k book. Preparing for battle. So they're giving you the full aspect of the hobby here. The army structure, how you can lay your army up. Alright, so yeah, it's giving you all the usual. Ah, factions as well. So who's friends with who? I had a whole chart for you. So Thousand Sons. Du -du -du -du. So you've got their distrusted allies of the Empress Children, Nine Warriors. They are fellow warriors with the Dark Angels. Ah, Thousand Sons. They're everybody's friend. No, they're not. Uh, they don't get on with Space Wolves. <laughs> Space Wolves, um... Yeah. They only fight next to each other in the direst of circumstances by the, by the direct command of their overlord, be they the Emperor or the Warmaster. Fascinating. 
They also don't get on with uh, the Death Guard, actually. Ooh, interesting. How interesting. Yes. Ultramarines do not get on well with the World Eaters, and they certainly do not get on well with the Alpha Legion. Anyway, I could go on with this uh, for a long time. Yet. Night Lords, they do not get on with the Dark Angels or the Empress Children, actually. How interesting. Uh, all the Imperial Fists, they do not like each other. Yeah. Imperial Fists do not like the Iron Warriors. The Space Wolves do not like the Dark Angels. Well, well, well. Imperial Army. No real hatred for anyone there. Just a mixture. Sworn Brothers. That's the Golden Mark. Ones that Sons of Horus, absolute best friends with the Death Guard. They're also big friends with the Night Lords. Well, well, well. The Salamanders, they're everybody's friend. They get on well with the Dark Angels, the Emperor's Children, the White Scars, Space Wars, Imperial Fists, the Blood Angels, and the Raven Guard, and the Mechanicum and the Imperial Army. So, very friendly. War Traits, it's lovely artwork here. It's Primarchs clashing. Look at these options here. Forge World, crazy stuff. The old Mechanicum, a full range of models from them. Wow. So different types of terrain setups that you can do. Quite basic looking. Spaceport, the custodians fighting away. Hive War. Yeah, there's an example of Adeptus Custodius Army. Uh, some of these models we've seen on the channel from Forge World with that time using them for this force. Battles in the Age of Darkness. Uh, so they're giving you some missions as well. So, like so. Oh, some interesting deployment zones. This one. Yeah. Different options here. The missions. Mission 1, Blood Feud, Onslaught, Dominion, Shatter Strike, Tide of Carnage, War of Lies. Ah, there's the Imperial Fists, a big spread of them. These huge Terminators of massive shields and swords down here. Yeah, tons of options. Hmm. And it finishes, uh, yeah, with some of the Forge World models. Oh no, there's more. Psychic Disciplines types of psychic powers available. Your reference sheet, which you get in here at the back, you also get the reference sheets, which we saw earlier on, and a good summary there at the back. And that is most useful. I'm glad to see an index at the back as well. Very, very useful for looking stuff up to give you page numbers. And there's some more colour reference here, showing off the new models, which are fantastic. Very, very nice indeed. And then mention the books at the back. So there it is. That's the walkthrough of the new book. Very, very comprehensive. 300 34 pages there for uh, Warhammer, uh, the Horus Heresy. So, massive book. Production quality, absolutely fantastic for Games Workshop. A lot of effort's gone into this uh, to really give uh, Warhammer 30,000 a big uh, relaunch here. So, very, very good indeed. Fantastic array of models. If you haven't seen the review already, it's just an unboxing. Chance to zoom in and take a look at the models and the other contents of the box. Uh, then check that out for the, uh, the uh, Age of Darkness box set. Uh, that's come out from, uh, from Games Workshop. Uh, two amazing armies inside, all the rules, dice, counters, and you get this book in there as well. So I uh, think it's a good set. And a great way to kick off your Warhammer 30,000 collection. So that's the review. Check out uh, the Outpost. Uh, link for them in the video description below. Shipping across the UK and Europe. Uh, and discount 40k, 30k, and a wide range of other gaming systems uh, available from them. That's the review. Keep a look out for more reviews uh, here. Hoping to do... Uh, the two Legion books as well, so uh, a review for the Traitor book, a chance to flick through and see all of that, and also for the uh, the, uh, the Traitor's Lawless, those two books will review uh, both of those. That's the plan. Thanks for watching, and tune in next time.